What's going on? In this video, I'm covering these four awesome lenses for the Canon RF mount and specifically crop sensor RF mount cameras. So these lenses are going to work great on your R50, R10, R100, and R7, as well as any future crop sensor RF mount cameras that are released. Now, most of these lenses are also going to work on full frame if you have a full frame RF mount camera or plan to upgrade in the future. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with some of these lenses. However, in this video, I'm going to be mainly focusing on APS-C or crop sensor performance. Now, one quick thing before we get into this video, I just launched my website, foxtailshop.com, where I'll be selling merch. I have some really soft and comfortable hoodies, crewnecks, t-shirts, and I have some stickers as well. I'll be launching more designs in the future. Like I said, the hoodies are really soft and comfortable and warm, which is perfect timing for winter coming up. I'll go ahead and link my website down in the description if you wanna purchase any of these. But even just the fact that you're taking time out of your day to watch this video, I can't thank you enough for. And I hope you gained some knowledge and entertainment out of this video. But you're probably about to skip forward, so I don't wanna waste your time anymore. Let's just get right into it. All right, so lens number one is the RF 50 millimeter F1.8 STM. So this is a 50 millimeter full frame lens, so it will cover full frame, again, if you have a full frame RF camera or if you plan to upgrade in the future. But on a crop sensor RF mount camera, this is equivalent to about 80 millimeters. So for example, if you have the kit lens and you zoom all the way to 45 millimeters, this 50 millimeter lens will just be slightly more zoomed in than that. So I wanna bring up some of the main specs of this lens, talk about some of the pros and cons, and then lastly, I'm gonna give some recommendations on who should buy this lens and what it's best used for. And so I'll be doing that with all of these lenses, specs, pros and cons, and then recommendations. So this lens has a minimum focus distance of 11.8 inches, which is surprisingly close. You can get really close up with this lens, which it's not a macro lens, but we will actually have one of those. So stay tuned if you want to see macro stuff. It has a 43 millimeter front filter thread, which isn't a very standard size, but you can easily get step up rings to get something more standard, like a 77 millimeter filter thread. Now the construction of this lens is pretty much fully plastic, except for of course, the metal lens mount on the back, which is really nice to see. And because of that mostly plastic construction, this lens only weighs 5.6 ounces. Now it might be kind of hard to really tell what 5.6 ounces really feels like, but let me tell you, this lens feels like it weighs nothing. Like you can barely feel it on a tiny camera like the R100. And I guarantee if you have something like an R7 or a full frame RF mount camera, you will not even be able to tell this lens is on front of the camera. It is astonishingly light. Like it seems too light for what it is, but the build quality still seems pretty decent. Like the plastic quality, it feels like what I'd expect. It even feels better than I'd expect for the price point of this lens, which I'll mention that right now. This lens comes in at about $180. I believe the retail price is $199, but I've always seen it on sale for $179. So trailing off the price, I'm gonna get right into some of the great things about this lens. First of all, this is the cheapest RF mount autofocus lens that you can buy from Canon, which instantly makes this a great choice for beginners and somebody that wants to purchase their first lens but doesn't have an extremely high budget like a lot of the RF lenses cost. Now also being an F1.8 aperture, this is gonna give you superb low light performance. So if you're in a really dark scenario, you can open up the aperture all the way to F1.8 and it's gonna let in a ton of light, which will give you much less grainy photos and videos than if you had the kit lens. And also that F1.8 aperture will give you a really shallow depth of field. So if you take portraits or product photos or something like that, you can really separate the foreground and the background from the subject and just gives you really good crisp looking photos. And all that in such a tiny and light body, like I said, you can barely even notice this lens on your camera. This is on the R100, which is Canon's smallest, lightest, and cheapest RF mount camera as well. These two pretty much go perfectly together. You can see this lens looks perfectly at home on the R100 body. However, there are some downsides to think about when purchasing this lens. Honestly, not many, especially given its price. But I wanna mention a few things just so that you know them if you're on the market for buying this lens. So first of all, every single first party Canon RF mount lens has a control ring. So this is essentially a ring that you can program to be almost anything in the camera. However, on a lot of the more budget lenses, including this lens, the control ring actually gets combined with something else. And in this case, it's combined with the focus ring. And so there's no manual autofocus switch and there's not a separate control ring. They're all combined into this one ring. 
ring here. So if you want to use it as a focus ring, you have to flip the switch over to focus. But even from that, you actually have to go into the menu of your camera to switch from manual to autofocus. So it can definitely add a little bit of time and a couple extra steps, you know, if you want to switch back and forth between manual and autofocus. Now, two more quick things. This lens isn't weather sealed. Once again, at this price point, you really can't expect that, but I do want to bring it up and mention it just so you know, there's no sort of weather sealing. So I would not recommend taking this lens in any sort of dusty or wet environment. And then also this lens definitely isn't tack sharp, you know, like an L series lens or, you know, a Sigma art series lens or something like that. You know, especially wide open at F1.8, it's a little bit soft throughout the image. Realistically, I don't think anybody would notice this, you know, unless you really crop in a bunch on your photos or really pixel peep. However, when you stop down to f2.8, across the entire image, it really sharpens up. And this lens provides very sharp images at f2.8, again, for less than 200 bucks. And besides that, there's really not a lot to complain about with this lens. You get I would honestly say more than what you pay for for 180 bucks with this lens. So now let's talk about who would I recommend this lens for. So I would say if you're planning on purchasing a lens to take portraits, photos of people or product photos, you know, something where you want to really, really separate your subject from the foreground and background and get that shallow depth of field, the 50 millimeter f1.8 is the perfect lens for that. Now also, if you have a kit lens and you just plan on purchasing your first lens, but don't exactly know where to start, you just know that you want to start buying different lenses and upgrading and you're getting better looking photos and videos. This is also a great lens to start. You can start with this 50 millimeter lens, which is again, kind of more zoomed in, more of a portrait focal length. You can start there, really see how you like it, and then from there decide, okay, you know, maybe now I want a wider lens to vlog with, which I'll have one of those coming up, so stay tuned. Or, you know, maybe you want even more of a zoomed in lens, then you can kind of go from there after buying this lens and seeing how you like it and what you think of it, and you know, what focal lengths you want to add to it. All right, that's it for the 50 millimeter F1.8. Now let's move on to the next lens. So the next lens we're talking about is this one right here. This is actually the only non-Canon brand lens on this list, but it's a very unique lens. So this is the Seven Artisan 60 millimeter F 2.8 macro. And so like the title states, this is a macro lens, which means this is gonna be specifically geared towards macro shooting. However, you can take non-macro photos and videos with it as well. So this is actually the only lens on this list that is an APS-C only lens, which means you won't be able to use this very well on full frame RF mount cameras. And so it's a 60 millimeter focal length, which means on these crop sensor cameras, it's actually equivalent to about hundred millimeters. So this is gonna give you a nice zoomed in focal length, which for macros is kind of what you want for the most part anyways. And this lens has a minimum focus distance of 6.9 inches, which is actually a one-to-one -one macro, which is a very good close up macro distance. Now this lens has a fully metal construction. There is not a single piece of plastic on this entire lens. It has some more weight and heft to it. It weighs 12 ounces. So I wouldn't even call it a heavy lens by any means, but the construction really does feel great in the hands. And then for price, this lens comes in at 180 bucks. So actually the same price as the Canon 50 millimeter F1.8, just a very different use case. So this seven artisan 60 millimeter lens is very, very sharp when you're taking up close macro photos. I was honestly astonished by the price to performance ratio with this lens. Like it is very, very sharp, even wide open at F2.8 when you're really up close getting those macro shots. Now the build quality and macro performance are really the two biggest strengths of this lens. It's fully metal construction, the focus and aperture rings are very well dampened when focusing and changing your aperture. But that does lead me into some of the cons of this lens, which first of all is that this is a fully manual lens, which means there's no autofocus, there's no electronic aperture, there's no you know, distortion corrections and stuff built into the lens. This is a 100% manual lens, which for a lot of people isn't a big issue and some people prefer this, but for some people, this is a huge deal breaker. So I'm gonna let you create your own conclusion based on that, but there's no electronics in this lens. It is fully manual. Now this lens also isn't weather sealed in any way, which for a macro lens could, you know, affect some people, you know, depending on what type of macro shooting you plan on using it for. It does go all the way to infinity focus. However, the performance when not shooting macro photos or you know any sort of somewhat close up photos just didn't seem very good to me. It wasn't quite as sharp. There was more chromatic aberrations. 
a ton of ghosting and flaring. And I would honestly recommend only purchasing this lens as a specific dedicated macro lens to your kit, which I would highly recommend because I've been getting so much use out of this for really close up B-roll and you know, for macro photos and just messing around with, it is so much fun. And if you don't have a macro lens, I would highly recommend looking into one. But that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next lens, which is actually gonna be a nice wide angle lens and another really, really good first lens option for you. And that is the Canon RF 16 millimeter F 2.8. And so you might have actually got this lens confused with the 50 millimeter because they are almost identical size, shape, weight. Almost everything about these lenses is identical, except for of course the focal length. That is a substantial difference between these two lenses. But a lot of the other stuff I talked about with the 50 millimeter lens will be very similar with the 16 millimeter. So this lens covers full frame, which is awesome, but on a crop sensor camera, it'll be equivalent to more of like a 25 to 26 millimeter lens. This lens has a 43 millimeter filter thread, has a minimum focus of 5.1 inches, which is surprisingly good. It's actually really good on this lens and you can get some awesome some not quite macro, but very close up wide angle images with this. That gives a really unique perspective and I'm really glad they allowed this close of a focus on this lens. Now this lens has a full plastic construction except for the lens mount, which is metal as well. But again, the plastic feels really good and for a budget small light lens like this, the quality is honestly better than I would expect. This lens weighs 5.8 ounces, so 0.2 ounces more than the 50 millimeter lens. And then the 16 millimeter F 2.8 comes in at $299, which for a full frame compatible 16 millimeter F 2.8 lens is a very good price point, especially in the RF mount, which is known for very, very expensive lenses. So some of the pros of this lens, it's of course a great wide angle lens, you know, 16 millimeters on full frame or about 25, 26 millimeters on a crop sensor camera. It gives you a really wide field of view. It's gonna be wider than the kit lens. So if you take your kit lens, zoom all the way out to 18 millimeters, it's gonna be slightly wider than that. And this lens is also very like surprisingly sharp right in the center of the screen. Now I've heard on full frame cameras, the sharpness really, really falls off a lot towards the edges. However, on a crop sensor camera, it's pretty sharp throughout, but definitely the sharpest in the center with some sharpness fall off towards the corners and edges of your image. Now I already mentioned the great close focus distance. It is very good on this lens. Again, not quite macro level stuff like the specific macro lenses will do, but still a lot better than I expected out of this lens. Now the cons of this lens are very similar to the 50 millimeter lens. The control ring and focus ring are combined. So all of those issues with, you know, you can't really switch from manual to autofocus just on the lens like you normally can with the autofocus manual focus switches. You have to switch to the focus ring on the lens and then go into the menu to switch from auto to manual focus and then back if you wanna go back to autofocus. So once again, just a little bit of an annoyance there but not really a deal breaker by any means. Now, once again, this lens is not weather sealed in any way, so I wouldn't recommend taking this in any sort of dusty or wet environments. I would recommend this 16 millimeter lens if you want something wider than what the kit lens can do, or if you just want a lens that's gonna be good for vlogging or recording yourself and just standard photos, like something you take with your phone. This will give you a very similar field of view on a crop sensor camera like the R50 and R100, as you would get on the standard 1X camera on your iPhone. So for just for standard use, you know, for vlogging, recording yourself, doing something like what I'm doing right now, and just very general stuff, I think this is the perfect lens for that. And so that's the use cases that I would really recommend the 16 millimeter lens for. And now onto the last lens. This one I've actually claimed, in my opinion, is the most underrated Canon RF lens in their entire lineup. And that is the RF 100 to 400 F 5.6 to F 8. Now I made a whole dedicated video about this lens and why I think it's the most underrated lens in the entire lineup, which I'll link that down in the description if you wanna check it out. And it'll really fill you in on anything I missed in this video as well. But this lens is amazing. Now the first thing you can see, of course, is the size and weight comparison between these other lenses. And so this is another full frame compatible lens, which is amazing. But once again, I'll be mainly talking about crop sensor performance. And on a crop sensor camera, this is equivalent to about 160 to 640 millimeters, which will really open up so many more possibilities that you never would have had with a kit lens or with you know a wider angle lens or really any of these other lenses. 
So this lens has a 67 millimeter filter thread. It once again has a pretty much fully plastic body with a metal lens mount. And this lens comes in at 1.4 pounds. So substantially heavier than all the other lenses on this list. And as you can see, a lot bigger as well. And then for pricing, the RF 100 to 400 comes in at about $650. So also the most expensive lens on this list. So some of the pros of this lens is of course, it's substantial reach. This goes all the way up to a 640 millimeter focal length equivalent on a crop sensor camera. And so you can get amazing long distance photos and you can just capture things that you would never be able to with any of these other lenses. Now this lens is also the only lens on this list with stabilization built in, and it also has very good stabilization. So you're not gonna get as shaky of images as you would with other lenses without stabilization. And of course, being such an extreme focal length, that is definitely a good thing to have. However, the f5.6 to f8 aperture is also a pretty big weakness of this lens. So being that slow of a maximum aperture means this lens will struggle a lot in lower light scenarios. You're gonna have to bump up your ISO quite a bit, which means you're gonna get noisier, grainier images. And I've personally found there's been situations where I just couldn't use this lens because it was too dark of a situation, whether it was indoors in a darker environment, or even, you know, outdoors on a cloudy or darker day. This lens will kind of struggle getting enough light to give you a bright look image without having to bump up your ISO so much that it'll add just a ton of noise to your images. So this lens definitely performs best in very well lit scenarios like, you know, outdoors on a bright sunny day or indoors in a very well lit environment. Now this is also a not a weather sealed lens. None of the lenses on this list are weather sealed, so definitely keep that in mind. Now also, this is a big and heavy lens, especially talking about on crop sensor RF cameras like the R100 here. I'm at 100 millimeters right now. If I go ahead and zoom in to 400 millimeters, look at that. So that's kind of something, you know, I wouldn't say is a specific con of this lens, but you should definitely know how, you know, front heavy and how kind of long this lens is. Now I did forget to mention, this does have an autofocus and manual focus switch, as well as a stabilizer switch on the side, which is really nice to have. And also does have separate zoom, focus, and control rings. So there isn't that weird switch like on those other lenses, where you have to switch between having a control ring and having a focus ring. This has both of them all the time. So you can always have that control ring to program it to do whatever you want, whether it's change your aperture, ISO, or really anything in between, which kind of makes sense because it is a more expensive lens than these other lenses on this list. I think if you wanna get into sports photography, sports videography, wildlife, stuff like that, where you need to get a very zoomed in perspective on something, this is the perfect lens for you. You really can't get a better Canon RF lens at this price point for what this lens can do. You know, of course you can get better lenses, but they're gonna be well, well, well over a thousand. I mean, over $2,000, over 3,000 for some of them even. So for 650 bucks, this is an amazing lens. Again, if you need that extremely long focal length. And so that wraps up these four awesome Canon RF crop sensor lenses. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.